The courtroom may soon be a familiar place for the people in our next story. They claim they were injured on the job and then tried to collect workers' compensation. But they were caught on tape, apparently feeling no pain. Phil Schumann has this special report. An energetic golfer swinging away for 18 holes. Does he look like someone who hurt his neck and shoulder and is disabled by the pain from his job as a field laborer? Or this man operating a heavy floor sander, later moving furniture. Does he look like he has a bad back from an on-the-job injury as a dock loader? And take a look at this roofer carrying 110 pounds of tar paper up a ladder. This man claims he's disabled by stress from his old job as an electrician. And what type of excuses do people offer when you confront them with the video? Oh, I took my medication, I was having a good day. Private eye Ted Kerner wielding his camera as a weapon helps put those who commit workers' compensation fraud behind bars. It was Kerner who captured former Oceanside, California firefighter Daniel Farney carrying heavy luggage, frolicking on the beach, after claiming an on-the-job injury disabled him, he's now awaiting trial on fraud charges. And remember our roofer? His disability claim, which was denied, listed, quote, entire body stress. A claim that could have paid him up to $490 a week for life, tax-free. Extra tracked him down at his latest roofing job to ask about this. But this woman, who turned out to be his mother-in-law, was, shall we say, overprotective. Chino. Chino, go, go. He did speak with extra off-camera at length, claimed being unable to work at his old job didn't mean he couldn't work at a new job. But it doesn't work that way. So many employers are fighting back. Clothing manufacturer Guess, for example, who supposedly disabled employee had no trouble working this sanding equipment, has made prosecuting fraud a priority. Do these people that are filing these supposedly fraudulent claims think they're just going to get away with it? These people are looking for the lottery. They think they're going to get a million dollars. They think they're going to get a big cash flow. What they got was caught. The National Insurance Crime Bureau estimates that fraudulent claims cost the insurance industry $5 billion a year. These clowns are suspected of taking their insurance companies for a ride, claiming injuries kept them from working. But playtime in the park turned into a bust, and all their antics were caught on tape. When we showed the videotape to the doctor, the doctor was kicking furniture in his office. He was furious. We tackle the wacky workers who may be going down for the count. This is Hard Copy for Wednesday, April 14th. Now the suspected scammers who tried to convince everyone they were too sick to work. But wait do you see the things they could do when they thought nobody was looking. Great day for a car wash or a little football with the kids. How about a trip to the carnival? Problem is, all of these guys are supposed to be at work. But these three are collecting workers' compensation for injuries so severe they could barely move. Check out the wrestler in blue tights. Well, he allegedly told his real employer that he needed surgery on his wrist and was in far too much pain to come to the office. But private investigator Ted Koner blew the whistle on this brawny bad guy. Six foot six and body slamming people. Getting body slammed himself, punching people, people punching him, throwing people out of the ring, people throwing him out of the ring. That's the slightest thing wrong with him. When we showed the videotape to the doctor, the doctor was kicking furniture in his office. He was furious. Chris Collins allegedly had a paralyzed right arm that could barely carry his big fat worker's comp check to the bank every week. But hey, Chris, I think you missed a spot on that bumper. Ted Koner didn't miss Chris with his camcorder, however. And he also caught this clown, Eduardo Mendez, firing fastballs and climbing aboard some hair-raising rides at the carnival. Trouble is, Eduardo claimed to be in so much pain, he couldn't get off the floor. 40,000 outrageous claims are submitted in California alone every single year. And the state shells out as much as $3 billion in fraudulent filings. Kevin Saucier oversees workers' comp for guest jeans and isn't at all surprised by what some people try to get away with. You get two-thirds of your salary when you're on workers' comp, not to exceed a certain dollar amount. That dollar amount's above what they make here, and it's tax-free. But it's not free to you, the taxpayer. 
Here are some of your tax dollars hard at work, paying Gary Murray to catch footballs at Pop Warner practice. Supposedly right then crippled to the point of not being able to get up and around at all in excruciating back pain. And we found this individual coaching the team five days a week in games on Saturday, running 30-yard pass plays, punting the ball, tackling kids on the very same days he was seeing the doctors and convincing them that he needed surgery again, that he was just in horrible pain. Well, if it makes you feel any better, some of these guys ended up like this. And no, they're not signing Gary to a pro football contract. Wax on, Chris, and you are down for the count because you've all been caught on tape. Well, that's hard copy. I'm Kyle Kraska. As we roll credits, we're going to roll some more of our workers' comp collectors working up a sweat. I would say right now about 30% are suspected fraud. The rest are real. And the ones that are real, we will do anything to make sure they are given the benefits that they deserve. This is a great way to beat the system. I can stay at home, get paid for it, and work on the side if I need to. I can make twice as much as I do at any other job. Humans are greedy. They want to not work and get money. They're committing fraud out here, and we're going to attack them. 99% of the time, we will catch somebody. BC News. Around the world and into your home. The stories that touch your life. This is 2020 with Barbara Walters, Diane Sawyer, Sam Donaldson, Connie Chung, Charles Gibson, and Hugh Dow. ABC News in New York, Diane Sawyer and Sam Donaldson. Good evening. Glad you could join us for 2020 Wednesday. The consumer. A case in point, Guess Jeans, based in Los Angeles. The company was faced with a series of unexplained accidents on the job and rumors of drug use and drinking among workers. Kevin Saucier is the director of risk management. We saw it growing in the very beginning, and we, know, we realized we had to put a stop to it right away. The management at Guess brought in private investigator Ted Kerner. We watched a marijuana cigarette get rolled and consumed and put back in the sock. We watched a six-pack of beer disappear in about 14 minutes, and the subjects went right straight back to work. Some of them were operating heavy equipment, such as forklifts um, and some of our cutting area, some, some sharp knives. Um, the mere fact that they were there intoxicated or under the influence um, posed a threat not, not only to them, but their fellow employees. Ted Kerner was amazed at how employees on the job blatantly disregarded the law and their employer. We simply parked at the curb right amongst the swarms of people coming and going. Some of those video pictures were taken from a few feet away from the subjects, literally, arm's length. In the end, five employees were caught and fired by guests. They estimate that in the eight years since they've used surveillance, they've saved $20 million in insurance claims and theft by catching employees, like this man stealing from their warehouse. Unlike most companies that don't usually disclose their use of surveillance, Guess shows the tapes to their employees. It's a first line deterrent. People must know that we're paying attention to detail. Kerner has been hired by dozens of major corporations to monitor their employees. He's captured people who claim injury, running up thousands of dollars in disability payments while vacationing in Hawaii escaping to the amusement park, dozing on the job, or dancing on the job. It's all really theft in just another form. Theft of time, it's a horrible problem. The cost to the employer is we're paying people not to work. Employees